Good afternoon to those who are with us today. Welcome. Welcome to the School of Business and Management, the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology um, program information webcast 2019. Um, I'm Kelvin Mack, the undergraduate program coordinator of the Department of Accounting. And the young lady sits beside me is uh, Ms. Chong Jennifer. Uh, she is one of our final year uh, major students. And uh, today, um, our responsibility to, is to give you the key information about our undergraduate program, uh, namely the bis, uh, Bachelor of Business Administration in Professional Accounting. Um, during the time you are watching and listening to us, you are encouraged to text in your question at any time. Uh, we'll try to address all your questions uh, at the end of the session. And if at the end we are not able to address all of them in one time, then we will uh, follow up and then take care of your questions uh, offline in due course. Uh, first of all, let me share with you the background or the idea behind the curriculum design of our program. Certainly the primary goal of our program is to groom business advisors and the next generation accounting and finance professionals that the program would then aim to enable them to add values to the business community. Now the point I really want to stress is, so the practice has long been uh, moving away from the conventional uh, number crunching practice. Uh, nowadays, uh, professional accountants, we, we are not bean counters. So uh, in fact, we're business advisors that proactively uh, provide advice to business people. And even some of the accountants, they are running their own business and managing their own companies. In order to do that, so we have to have a very uh, broad-based curriculum in order to provide ways to our students to, main, to, to acquire multidisciplinary abilities. Now, we subscribe to this thought. So in order to provide our students with multidisciplinary abilities, so they have to have a very uh, broad-based uh, learning experience. Uh, in our curriculum, not just uh, confined to traditional classroom learning. So the program also uh, put emphasis on other learning experience. Uh, for example, um, we offer electives to our students, so they are encouraged to participate in internship of uh, various kinds, and also they are encouraged to exchange out to other our sisters or partner university worldwide to have, in order to get um, real life experience. So later on, Jennifer will be the good person to share with you in this respect about her own personal experience in this regard. In order to uh, deliver everything I, I mentioned, we, we need a very dedicated team. What I can share with you is, so in the department, we have not just good teachers, good faculties, but we also work with a, a, a bunch of uh, dedicated and mean staff with good passion to look after the needs of our undergraduates. So these certainly are the things that set us apart from others in the community. Talking about our program, so I would like to uh, summarize our points that I'm going to talk about in three areas. So personally, I would regard it as a, a content-rich um, and experience-rich and also an opportunity-rich program. First of all, let, let me uh, take, you to, take you through the, the core competence uh, requirement um, under our accounting under, undergraduate program. So the, the competence that you're looking at, essentially they are also the uh, major core courses uh, included in our program. The thing that I really want to put emphasis on will be that the, these competence, I would say they are all cross-disciplinary or interdisciplinary. So put it in perspective. For example, if we imagine we're in a, a financial statement audit situation, and auditors should not have just having the knowledge of auditing standards or the professional ways how they can effectively carry out the audit procedures. But at the same time, they should have, uh, or they, they should well, well versed with like, for example, company law requirements, uh, taxation knowledge, and also financial reporting standards, et cetera, so that the auditor, he or her, or he or she, 
uh, will be able to identify the potential risk um, underlying the potential, the potential risk underlying the reporting entity. Apart from the core competence, so we never overlook the importance of giving a breast of the um, practice changes. So that's the reason why we recently introduced two new electives to our students. The first one uh, is the financial statement analysis using the latest business analytical tools. And the second one is the accounting analytics for professional accountants. And because we care of what we do uh, and the professional bodies, you know, whether it's uh, academic professional bodies or professional uh, accounting bodies, so they see the quality in it. So that's the reason why, so we've been receiving continuously over the past like 20 years, uh, having the accreditation uh, from them. And in particular, when we talk about the, the Hong Kong Institute of Certified Corporate Accountants, in short, we call it HKICPA, so which is the sole licensing body that regulates our profession and also grant license to professionals. So a graduate actually successfully can obtain a full exemption from all the papers at an associate level. They are altogether 10 of them. So in other words, a graduate will be able to seamlessly enroll in the four module at the professional level uh, right in the year of graduation. So it's definitely a plus to uh, our accounting major graduates. Now, speaking of experience rich perspective, so let's look at the other classroom activities. So in this regard and on that front, so we particularly have this total learning concept in mind. So what, what does it mean? So we would like to see how out of classroom or in enrichment activity to what extent is going to help uh, university education. Now, um, I'd like to share with you in this particular end using three examples. The first one uh, is about the student development programs. So as I mentioned earlier, apart from the traditional classroom learning, so we purposely partner with the professional firms. Uh, not just accounting professional firms like the big four, namely the Deloitte, EY, KPMG and Price. And we also with opportunity to partner with other commercial corporate as well. So a lot of them actually provide very good, well-designed student development programs like student clubs or cadet programs. And because of their scale, they are big firms, they're big corporates. So they have offices around the world. So that means their cadets, their trainees, essentially they are our students, in fact. So we'll be given opportunity to have training overseas. So it's definitely a good uh, learning experience outside of classroom. Second, because of these are also the potential employer of our graduates, so they also offer placement opportunity to our students as well. So we've been receiving internship program invitation from not just public accounting funds, but recently uh, the department also spent a great deal of efforts to secure more internship opportunity for students uh, from a business corporate as well. So in terms of um, financial analyst position or management uh, position as well. And because of this good uh, partnership practice in place, so a lot of these uh, uh, top management people from the big four firm or from the business corporate. So they also help us. They also help to groom our students uh, through various channels. So for example, they, some of them, a lot of them actually, they, they contribute their time and efforts uh, to, to, to help our student to uh, uh, acquire real life experience and provide advice to them in their self-development journey. So a lot of them actually act as a student mentor or external mentor uh, and they also give lectures with the topical issues uh, with primary objective to let our student uh, know about the, the, the actual development in the practice. So the first hand knowledge from their real life practice, practice experience so that our students will be able to raise their awareness of their job placement choice. So the last component under this enrichment activity so I must count on the case competition and debates. 
our students actually would uh, a lot of chances to put themselves in challenge. So these are at the same time a golden opportunity for them to learn as well. Uh, among others, so I would like to share with you the most exciting event will be the yearly business case competition organized by the HKI CPA. Um, actually, I led two teams at the beginning of the month and uh, I can happily share with you one of the team actually won uh, the second runner up and the other team actually won the best paper award of this competition. Now, let us um, go through the employment performance by showing you some of the key numbers expressed themselves in percentage. Um, on the right hand side, uh, you might notice, so our graduate actually um, obtained full-time employment upon graduation. So 91.3% uh, of them actually did that. So it's, it's pretty remarkable. So each year, uh, we have roughly 180 accounting graduates, and they've been performing very well in uh, graduate or recruitment performance. And if you look at the second item, so actually more than uh, three quarters of them uh, were able to obtain the first job offer even before they graduate. So in other words, um, uh, accounting graduate, actually very competitive and actually well received uh, by the employers. And this page shows you a list of the main employers who've been very uh, supporting and uh, recruited a, a lot of um, uh, accounting major students. And you might realize some of them actually well-known corporates, like at the very top of Accenture, which is a very uh, well, good practice in the um, business consulting area. And let alone, of course, we have the big four firm and also the big banks as well. So that means looking at this employee list, so it turns to very good and promising uh, graduate recruitment opportunities to our graduate as well. Okay, so now I've done my part. So after listening to all I've covered, so anything you'd like to add on? And I bet the audience in front of us, they've been waiting for long from you and would like to hear from you your first hand experience and tell our audience what exactly our program is like. Sure. So here today, I'm going to talk about my experience as, a, as an accounting student and mainly focus on my internship experience. So uh, as many people expected, uh, an, an accounting student should have worked in Big Falls. And yes, I did. <laughs> I was a winter intern in KPMG. And one point to notice it, I figured out that at that time, I'm quite uh, easily to pick up the work that my senior manager assigned to me. And I think that that credit to the accounting program that in uh, HKUSC, because I think our accounting curriculum is uh, well designed in step with the needs of the business sectors. And also, it's also uh, aligned with the current, the latest business practice. Therefore, especially like uh, the auditing course that I study, I find that the uh, auditing technique is what exactly I did in the working environment. So the content rich part. Then. Yeah. <laughs> Good content. And I think that make us more easy to pick up all the working and right. also uh, outperform comparing like within the internship. Good. And secondly, uh, apart from working in the auditing firm, uh, I also have experience in banking industry. Mm -hmm. And I was a summer intern in HSBC, commercial banking side. Uh, I think that, uh, as I remember, uh, one part of the assessment that throughout the internship is the very last uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. So I need to work with the other five interns and uh, have a presentation about US-China trade war. Mm -hmm. So I think this part uh, also uh, well equipped because uh, USD Business School have many courses with mm -hmm. many presentations. Mm -hmm. So usually every semester we have a few presentations. So after training from all this course, 
I'm easily like uh, having a structure presentations mm. and that helped me a lot in that the final assessment in the internship. And I think many of you will think of a question to ask is that uh, you as an accounting student, so don't you think it's a waste if you work in the banking industry, like don't work in the big force, like the accounting firms. And I think it's not totally a waste, you can say, because in our accounting curriculum, we have a lot of uh, other skills like uh, financial statement analysis, and also just like the newly added elective. Uh, they are the skills that you need for the whole business world, like all the jobs you need to read the financial statement, you need to know how to analyze them, how to calculate all the ratios from the financial segments. So I think this is not a waste, but this is well equipped me with a uh, more choice of my career pathway. Exactly. So this is a point that I really like about accounting. And uh, at last, luckily I got my return over from HSBC. So I think I will pursue my uh, career from now on mm. in banking industry. Yep. And that you can also see that uh, these are the other experience that I have throughout this four year program. I've went to uh, exchange in mm. Switzerland and I've also other internship experience like in uh, China. So and which, also, which picture shows you your work in Switzerland? So uh, the top left. Top left. Okay. Yes. So and also you can see that we have uh, presentation in all our courses we have to suit up and present mm -hmm. like uh, professionals so and at last uh, this is also my photos with my others interns yeah right. and that is all my experience I can say okay so basically uh, thank you Jennifer so her experience shared basically very much in line with what I described about the program. So it's just not just content rich, but experience rich as well as opportunity rich as well. Um, my my remark would be like, um, uh, in our program, you need to work hard, but look at Jennifer's case. So the work that the work that you put in your program actually paid off. Um, so um, I think it's time to address some of the questions that we receive. Um, so let me read the question first. So the first one we received was how lectures are conducted and what's the usual teaching and learning methods. Um, uh, I, I cannot tell you a one model that suits all courses uh, because if you look back and look at the core competence, actually with auditing, with financial accounting, with taxation. Uh, but what the, the, the way that we conduct lecture, what I can share with you though, so it's a, a part lecture, part interaction. So uh, we lecturers, we, we do not lecture the whole class all the way through. We, we, we do not do all the talking. So we, we our objective is to give the, the basic thing, so to define the turf, to define the boundary for discussion. And then the rest of the time during the a normal, regular class, so we have problems. So we have problem solving time. So we lecturers, at that moment, so we, we become facilitators. So we walk around the room and address students' questions and, 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 and problem that, that they might have. So uh, the actual teaching and learning is uh, in interaction, dominant in that way, because accounting is a skill that you, you, you cannot fully acquire the skill. You will not be able to fully understand the thing unless, unless you practice. So unless you get your hands dirty. So that's how we conduct a typical lecture for the discipline. Um, so, uh, the next question I received was, uh, if I study accounting as a major, can I practice outside Hong Kong? Uh, now, it's a very practical question. Uh, it's a, in fact, it's a good one. Um, how, depends on how, how do we look at practice. So if we, if, we, if we see practice in general, so how you apply your accounting professional skills. So actually, it's um, accounting, I would say, in particular, after you qualify. So it's a passport that will take you to, to 
the places around the world. Because we're talking about professional accounting skills like um, financial management, um, business law. Um, in under business training, actually, you can carry it along. So it's so your accounting uh, uh, qualification actually helps you uh, to work not just in Hong Kong but overseas. But on the other hand, if you look at practice as uh, as a, in a role as an auditor, so auditors actually carry a, a special mandatory roles in different jurisdictions. So the mandatory role performed by auditors is they are really a bunch of independent professionals that can actually sign audit reports. So audit reports is a thing that tell the general public, the users of financial statement. So the reporting entity in a particular year of, in a, a particular financial year, so the financial statement the directors prepare actually true in fact. So they have the statutory role and responsibility that, that empower them to sign audit reports. Okay, so in, in that regard, so if we look at practice in such a way, so uh, if you obtain a HKI CPA qualification, then you might need to practice in Hong Kong at the beginning. So if you want to sign all the reports in some other jurisdiction, then you may need to pursue a professional qualification in other jurisdiction as well. Uh, okay, so we have another interesting question that maybe Jennifer will be in a better position uh, to address this. So the question was, uh, if one study uh, BAFS, so business uh, accounting and financial studies, so in the high school, so does, would it be giving any advantage when he or she actually study in our program in HKUSD? Okay, so this so is a very, very common question. And for myself, I have studied BAFS in mm. the HADSD. So I would say when coming to choose accounting uh, course, uh, I would, the first year, there is a fundamental course for every major you have in mm. business school. So there's also uh, one for accounting. So I think for that course, you may easily pick up some accounting concept uh just for the very beginning mm. and but later on there is many adopt and other concepts that you have to learn uh, uh on top of the bafs what you learn so i think you may have slightly advantages mm -hmm. on the like the first course you have but then uh others may also chasing up because they also have to study the first fundamental course mm. and they will also learn all the skills that you learn in bfs mm. and then later on every one is in the same pace. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, okay, um, we have another question. Maybe Jennifer and I can uh, address it together. So it's a, it's a hot question indeed. So will accounting be replaced by technology development in this as well? Um, maybe, let me first attempt this and then Jennifer may have it. Okay. Uh, course. Um, Actually, it's a, a, a very a valid question to ask in particular in the past like four to five years. So a lot of people pay a lot of attention about AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, and in fact, all of us have been witnessing uh, a lot of uh, disruptive changes in a lot of, in, in a lot of uh, sectors in the business, uh, including accounting, of course. Um, so my answer to this, first of all, uh, to a certain extent, technology will help the way we do or perform our professional job. Uh, for example, so in the course of auditing, so we need to collect audit evidence. Uh, artificial intelligence or technology, it does help to improve the efficiency. So make auditors' life uh, in terms of performing repeated, repetitive tasks faster and more accurate. Uh, but technology will not be able to replace human decisions, human decisions. So on that front, I would say we never worry too much about technology, the way they replace our whole uh, professional career. Do you agree? Yeah, uh, with my experience in working in the accounting firms, I think the repetitive uh, practice, uh, it 
will, I think, will be replaced by the technology, like typing in all the numbers, uh, building the excels, but then the human decision, whether Different. it's uh, the number is right or wrong in this year, or is it right? So I think this is still need the human decision to make it. Okay. Uh, I think uh, that's uh, the, the end part of our session. So thank you very much for watching and listening to us. So if you have further inquiries, so you may contact our admission officers and also student ambassadors through through these ways. So we are um, we, we have the presence of, of, of all these social media uh, with presence of, of all these. So you may contact us if you have any uh, inquiries concerning admission, concerning our program. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.